Some of it, uh -huh. because... Um, Let me just make an introduction real quick. Yeah, let's make an introduction. Hey guys, it's Martin Miller here from Gitcon 2017, and I'm sitting down with Marco. Marco, introduce yourself to the audience, please. I'm Marco. Oh, yeah. I'm the Marco, Mar Gitcon Marco. Gitcon Marco. Gitcon Marco, yeah. So, I'm Marco. Uh, uh, and you're, you're, you're a guitar player? I'm a guitar player. We literally just met, really, so oh, yeah. it's, it's very off the cuff, this one. I am more of an engineer, mm -hmm. so I'm also a guitar player. I, I do a lot guitar. of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do a lot of stuff, and I really lo love this stuff. And um, I really love your playing. Oh, thank you very much. And we had Tom Quayle here now. I love his playing also. Oh, he's amazing. Yeah, yeah, and those are pretty interesting concepts you're talking about. So Exactly. Maybe because... Maybe we can tie these videos in with each other. So what Tom and I just talked about is maybe I can just give you a little insight and, and show you some, of course, some examples or teach you a system. So how do you visualize the, the, the fretboard? What's what's your well? The thing is um, mental image. Yeah, um, I've been playing guitar for six years, so mm -hmm. that's not a, a long time. But I took my time to practice and stuff. Mm -hmm. I didn't study music. Uh, I mean, officially, I didn't go to university, I studied engineering, but I got my engineer's degree, mm -hmm. but um, I was really interested, you know, in, in, in solfeggio, you call it solfeggio, solfeggio, yeah. solfeggio yeah. yeah, and um, harmony, music theory, all the stuff, so, you know, I read books. Nice. I read a lot it of works. Books works. And, and uh, practice a lot. So let's say, let's, let, let me just, yeah, if I, if I were just to give you a chord, okay. could you play me the fifth? Like, if you were in that position, how many options would you have? Um, well, play it here, here, here. Mm -hmm. Do you, would you know all combinations of fifths that you can find on the fretboard? Yeah, I would. Uh, the thing is, um, I can, uh, sometimes I can do it, but I'm not really fast at it. Okay. So, now, you know, I'm kind of intimidated with the guy, but you know, uh, the thing is, I can do it if I practice it. So if I have a song I have to play, you know, on a gig or something, you can prepare it. I can prepare it. Yeah. And I, you know. Yeah, that's like the beauty of the fretboard visualization system tied in with ear training is really that you can not only play what you can play, what you prepare, but you can also play what you cannot play. Yeah. So it, it, if the better you master the system, it becomes just a matter of I want to sound like this. Yeah. And you just do it. Yeah, of course. That, that's in a perfect world. You, you never get to that point where you can play everything you hear, and you you just get it out immediately. But you get better at it. So, um, what I would recommend to you is to practice. because you first of all, yes. <laughs> but you know, there's the saying, "Practice makes perfect." I disagree with that. I think perfect practice makes perfect. Yeah. So it doesn't just matter. Just the fact that you put the time in doesn't mean anything. Yeah. You can become better at the wrong thing. So. Um, since you already have a lot of knowledge, for you, I think it's more of a matter of just taking it and organizing it a bit better, right? So if you were to play, if I, I just asked you to play the fifth of A, why don't you find all the fifths of A on all the string combinations? So let's say we start on the low okay. string, okay? The, fir the first intuition you usually have is to go for this one, but how about this one? So you got, you got these two, right? Right. Go to the A string. Um, let's not use the open strings. This one might be a bit unusual for you, right? You, you don't usually fret fifths like that. Yeah, and it's unusually if I'm out of tune, you know? That's also that's unusual. Also, that's not helpful. I'll pitch correct if that works. So, but, but, but let's say you were to play an A major triad. Right. You play this a lot, so you could think of this thing as being part of this triad. Of course. So there's your fifth, right? Yeah. Uh, D string. Do it yourself. Try to find it. Find out. Well, we've got an A here. Yeah. We got we the classic can power chord. Yeah, power chord stuff. Then and another, another option. Another option? Yes. This one, this is a, like, I 
think of it as the Jimi Hendrix one. And That's awesome. If you have that association, it's going to help you learn a lot. Yeah. It makes it much easier. And th okay. This one is really useful and it sounds different. Sounds, it sounds very different. Very different. Very different. Very different. Like all the... the whenever, whenever, I do, different. whenever I do like studio work and I do some overdubs with some shimmery sounds, I always... Like, if yeah. I don't want to add too much clutter, and especially if it's if slightly overdriven tone. Yeah. So much better than. Oh, well, I like I like the little uh, the thriller. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Show yeah. me, show me. I mean, that's just surface stuff, you know. That's, that's know. just not really the issue. It's just that's just makeup. It sounded really nice. Yeah, it just gives it a bit of a vocal quality. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. Let, but let's let's just okay. move on. I got you're you're the kind of guy who needs a lot of focus. I think when they yeah. practice, um, get distracted very easily. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm the same. I, uh, because it, because I do uh, ten thing ten things uh, yeah. at one time. So yeah. So that's that's maybe if you can find like a, a headspace. Maybe maybe it helps you to get a, a really good rehearsal room or something. You know what I do when I practice? I drive out. Uh, I have a I have a rehearsal room that's like 25 minutes from my from my place. And when I when I go there, I really practice because I don't have any internet. I don't have. A fridge that's tempting me. I don't have a yeah, television. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, just yeah. drive there and I completely zone in. I can go three hours at a time, no problem. So, G string. Right. G string. Well, we have an A here, we have an E here, we have an open. Exactly. Um, then we have the. Oh, this and is the the, e. it's only the B string missing. Um, it's only. B string missing. I think, I think it was all the combinations, right? Well, well I, I have an A here and. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know what is useful. Uh, yeah. that's, that's, that's it. That's it. Kind of. It doesn't really doesn't really work because it's not transposable. Okay. So we're not too too interested in that. It's a nice trick, but it okay. only works in this key. And you know what you could do is you could extend it to the major and minor triads. Okay. Okay. So you could go same same deal. So the low E string. And the one starting with the first finger. Oh, the like. So it's kind of because it's, I don't see your guitar okay. at the moment, but okay, that that is the one. Uh, the it's okay. On. The, the cool thing is you can you can kind of remember this. There's always like if you're playing triads and scales, there's three types of fingerings usually. Okay. There's one that starts with the first finger. Yeah. There's one that starts with the, with the with the second or third finger, okay. and there's one that starts with the fourth finger. Okay. So we have the, the first one starting. Yeah. Um, so that's really cool. Transpose it to the other strings. Okay. Um, and by the way, at any point, this is this is not a finger exercise. At any point, I want the guys in, in our virtual audience and you to be aware of what notes you're playing okay. in relation to the root notes. So I want you to I always, I always, here's my third, here's my fifth, here's my third, here's my fifth. Yeah, I always think in intervals mm -hmm. and usually I have problems when I play, you know, B major or C sharp majors to, to name the notes. I have to think, and it doesn't matter. I have to think a bit, and I have a lot of you know, a lot of friends that don't know they don't think in intervals. They they know the notes. They know the notes really fast, but I don't get it. But I, that, I prefer the, but the notes that don't matter. Yeah. so much because music is relative. I give you an easy example. Um, what song? Okay, it's happy birthday, right? What's this song? It's the same song. It's the same song. I just played it in two different keys. Yeah. It does not matter. The only thing that matters is the relation of notes to each other and to the underlying harmony. So music is really relative. You can think of it. You you take you take a picture by let's say Van Gogh, okay. and you you put it on your phone, and you. You turn down the brightness on your phone. Okay. The relation of the colors from one to another remains the same, right? Is so you can still recognize the shapes, you can still recognize the picture. It's just become darker. Yeah. Or it becomes brighter. Yeah. But the relations remain the same. 
Yeah. The only well, that's a good analogy. I didn't think of that. The only time sense. where it really matters, where the actual key matters, it's not the only time. It's 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 certain certain intricacies with instruments, like in our case, open strings, or with uh, with horn players who prefer to play in, in B keys as opposed to flat keys as opposed to sharp. Those kinds or vocal range, you know, those kinds. Yeah. Of, those kind of things. Those matter. But what we as guitar players, and especially as people who want to improvise, we only care about the relation of one note to the next, yeah. or of of a note to the root note of the chord that yes. we're playing over. Yes. So with that in mind, go through all the strings and then try those permutations. I actually, yeah, do it an octave up because it, it, with oh. the open string we're kind of we're kind of limited. So start with the with the with the one on the fourth finger. Oh. Make, make it very systematic. Right. Um. Yeah, this one I would play with the fourth finger, for example. This one. Yeah, that's the fourth finger shape. So now you grab the one with the second finger. You could go through all the fingers. That's why I'm saying you. I think you're a kind of guy who has a lot of energy, a lot of talent, and you would you. you would maximize all of that if you just became a little bit more systematic with those things. So go through all the finger combinations very systematically in order. Yeah. Don't fool around. Let the system guide you. Yeah. And when that's that's for practice. And when you play. Whatever you just you just do whatever whatever yeah whatever want. feels comfortable whatever feels comfortable you go the past path of least resistance but yeah. when you practice it's good to put yourself in a very small cage sometimes and, and, and practice in a very uh, with a very specific set of rules oh I get it cool so with that in mind D string D string starting with the fourth finger which is actually going to suck yeah it's better in the yeah because it's in that one. Yeah. So it's actually the third or the fourth finger. That's yeah, right. yeah, I get but it. I didn't want to make it too confusing. Get it. And then we have the. Okay, nice. Uh, B string. Mm, B string now. Oh, we only have two fingerings. Yeah. Ah, so oh, we forgot the G string. We forgot. Talk about just being systematic. We forgot the G string. Sorry. All right. So here. Go knock this up. Um. Okay, let's start. Let's start uh, systematically. Start with the start with the one. Yeah, I forgot this third one. finger. And the last one is kind of shitty. The one with the first finger is really shitty. Yeah, yeah it's kind of so, because of these two things. So you see, this is this is the thing I clarify. Some people, some people in your position might go. Yeah, I, I know all of this, you know, I, I've had those types of students, but um, I'm not saying you're one of them, but um, what you saw, you had a little bit of yeah. extra thought on yeah. the G and, and B string. In improvisation, you don't have the time for that extra thought. Yeah. That's why I, I've taught this stuff over and over. I wrote a damn book about it and I, I practiced it like mad yeah. and I still repeat it. I repeat it all the time because if I don't, it just fades away. Yeah. And you, as an improviser, you don't have the time to have those little yeah, right, yeah, right of course. Areas, right? that, that, that's the thing, you know. I kind of know my way around. And I know the, the ball. Keyboard is kind of. Kind of know, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Well, I, I can use it in some simpler chord, you know, pro, simpler harmonies. But if, if it gets, you know, difficult, I'm not fast enough, I have to practice that. Yeah. If I practice, maybe I can prepare something, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, and but even the preparation process becomes much quicker when you have those tools. What I want to say it, is that um, sometimes it's easier uh, when you have an actual gig to play this stuff. Yes. And my problem always was to apply it. To apply it because I practice. I practice this at home, and then I go to a gig and I play three chords. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and people want, you know, they they want all the flat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the flashy stuff, and it's like, okay, you know, I, I but, can do that, know, but I, that, that I, sucks. I refer to this as passive skills. Do you, do you play Diablo by any chance? Oh, um, Diablo 2, I played. Not, so, not there, there, a there's part. passive skills and there's active skills. Okay. <laughs> and the, the active skills are I the skills well. that you activate, where you go, I'm going to do it now. Okay. And this one is a passive skill, meaning that everything you do is undermined by those fundamentals. You don't have to actually go, I got to play this shape now. You don't have to do that. It, oh, I understand that. By practicing and letting it sink in, I'm talking about months and years, let it sink yeah. in for months. It'll just inform every decision that you make on the fretboard. Yeah. will be double checked with your knowledge that you already have about it. So you don't worry about applying it. It'll just happen. 
If, if you wanted to apply it, let's say you, you're very you're very good with triads now. What you could do is you could take a cadence, okay, and learn to find the different inversions of that. Well, first of all, you should do the same thing with minor really quickly before we move on. So do the same thing with A minor and all those fingerings. Yes. Um, um did I miss something? Yes, yes you yes, missed yes. the one with the second finger. Yeah. So the cool thing is, except for the B string, um, you know when you miss something because you always have to have three fingerings. Yeah, for the yeah, 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 yeah. So, so that's that's cool. So if you have ever, if you ever question yourself, you're 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 by yourself and you're not with an instructor. You know that you have them all when you have three, three on, on one root note. Yeah. So try the A string. Um, I did did it. Yes. You go really quickly through all of them. Right. Yes. You could change fingerings around a little bit, but okay. go go an octave up because we'll run into it. Okay. Actually, no, we won't. With the minor, we won't. We won't run into trouble. Um. You can have this one. Yeah, that's it. Let's just let's just plow ahead. Okay. Um, now, um, are you familiar with the inversions of triads? Yeah. Um, then here's a cool exercise. Um, first of all, just to familiarize ourselves with it, we're starting on the low E string again. Okay. And let's play all the the, the inversions of the C major triad. for you and you're going to impose the triads over that. I'm going to play it. Okay. That is our cadence, right? Mm -hmm. oh. So we have, it's, it's like the Hallelujah. Okay. okay. Uh, and you're going to start uh, this inversion. Okay. And change your triad, the triads that you're playing. Along, okay. Along. So it'll, it'll, for the okay. first example, it'll go. Positions starting on the low east. Okay. Find it. Okay. Maybe talk about the thought process. Maybe it's, it's always helpful to name those things. So tell me what, what inversion of what triad you're playing. Okay. This is the second inversion. Yes. Of the C major chord. Mm -hmm. Here we have the first inversion of the F major chord. And then if I play the. Um, well, I could play this one here. That would be the same. But yeah, it's moving too far. Yeah. Okay. Like to keep it close. Okay. Then I could just play. The first inversion of the G major chord it's the root position. It's a root position. Oh. Yeah, it's we're, confusing. It's confusing. We're a little exhausted here at Yukon, <laughs> so yeah, that was stupid. So yeah. sweet. There you go. The thing is, this is really interesting. I should really practice this a bit because I didn't practice this, you know, like thoroughly practicing it, knowing it, because you. You know, at a raw gig, you don't do this. Shit, you but know. you do it. At, you can do it at funk gigs, and all, all. You can do it at funk gigs, or when you play with a, with, you a, can, with yeah. a second guitar player. Let's say, let's say you're you're the you're the first guitar player and the second guitar okay. player. You have you you play a Pink Floyd cover. And I bet you can't do this on this guitar. Oh, not bad at all. Cool. Anyway, I forgot so, that so let's say you're playing this inversion. I'm, I'm the second guitar player. I just, I don't just want to double what you're doing. Okay. I look at this chord and I recognize there's. So you use a minor seven. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's like the original chord. Yeah. Okay. And do you recognize what this is? Um. 
Oh, that's like well, the, the, they the, met it in the in the seventh yeah, court, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you recognize that? Uh, th that's like an a Aeolian, maybe I could call it that, or an no, A. Much, it's much simpler. Um, this is an F major triad. First F major triad. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. what we learn from this is if we have a D bass note and we put a major triad a third above the root note, okay, we get a minor seven chord. Oh. So you have D, you think the third of D, the minor third, is, a, is an F. And if we play an F major triad on that D bass, we get it uh, D minor 7. Yeah. Awesome. So with that in mind, we can just run through the, through the inversions. We had uh, uh, that. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have... Can do this one for you? play this, you can play something up here. And you can be out of the way of the other rhythm player. Right, so uh, maybe you can demonstrate that. I'll be the, you know, the David Gilbert ba background okay. and you do your stuff, okay? Okay. One, two, three, four. solo and what we can concur from this conversation is that even the rock guys know their shit. <laughs> yeah, when when, when I, I, did, I made a little trick, I made a little superimposition, I went from an F, F tri to a G tri and that works with all the, you know, the old, because some people mindlessly play this. You can even do it with with like larger. Like, do you know the the, the open position it tries? Yeah. Like it does have a exactly. So if you know all those inversions, you can go F G F G F G F G F G uh, F G and maybe resolve it to D minor. Awesome. So you can build some. Really so I like those like sounds. That. I like those open chords, or oh, yeah, open, how do you call them? Well, open position. Open position. It's wide awesome. interval. Yeah, uh, you just, I know, you, the, the second interval is on an octave higher. I think of it as, as, as dropping an interval, so I, I, like if, I have a, if I have a triad, let's say C major triad, I think of it as, as dropping the middle note. Uh, yeah. I get this. And then I build the inversions from that by taking each note higher, so I take the fifth up to the So 
so we, the, the camera just shut off. I have no idea where it shut off, but I'll just repeat the last couple of things I was showing you. We're talking about the open position uh, triads where we go instead of doing this, we go do this. And what I do with this, I take it through all the combinations of sets of strings, which I also show in my uh, improvisation masterclass if you want to get into this a little bit more. Little plug here. Um, so I would start figuring this out on the E, A, and D string first. And now you have to pretend like you never heard me say this before. <laughs> so next combination would be I take the highest note up the string, which gives me this figure. And I take this note up the string, which gives me E, D, and G string. string which would be A, D, and G string which gives you this fingering which is not very usable because it's way too stretchy but you use it to figure it out. It's, it's, yeah. it's still cool for yeah, that. Yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah. and you've got a, got a ton of fingerings to work with. At some point, you don't even think so much about the actual fingerings anymore. You just think about, I have my third here, I need another root, I need another fifth. And your fretwork knowledge, if it's developed enough through all the triad practice, you just find those notes on the fly. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah I get it. And we just had this, this cadence practice that we didn't really go through with because we, we don't have that much time here. But uh, we had the, the C major, the F major, the G major. simple and it sounds pretty you know it sounds I don't want to say complicated it sounds full it, it sounds, sounds complete it you know what you compare you compare the close voicing to the the white interval it's, it's a whole different beast you know this close voice yeah. it's the same musical content but this yeah, it sounds more dramatic and the, and the voice leading is different it sounds more orchestral if oh, you will because yeah. you have a bass cellos and, and, and the, the upright basses. Yeah. You got uh, you got like the, the, the horns, the, the woodwind, and on top you have the, the violins. If you if you want to think yeah, about yeah, it. it's yeah, like yeah, a mini yeah. orchestra. Yeah, good point. It's it's a very broad spectrum of pitch because you're you, you cover this area of pitch yeah, as opposed yeah. to this area of pitch. So that's very cool. It's very cool. Yeah, and obviously you can practice all those inversions like randomly. I, I when I go do this, I go randomly up the fretboard. chord melodies out of it. Uh, so, now I'm going to lose how many years of my life to practice Since that? Since you already got a ton of knowledge up your sleeve, as, as again I said, you just need to become a bit more disciplined. Figure out all the combinations of stuff. Just sit down and do it very carefully. Don't distract yourself and don't worry about applying it too much. If like if you have a song, if you have a new song, you get a sheet. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's that's a nice chord progression. Let's try that with. Oh first. yeah, you can you can do that. But other than that, just keep keep working at it, and it'll just sink into your subconscious at some point. And you just one well, day you find yourself at a gig, and you just go, hey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> cool. Right, man. Thanks, Thank Marco, you. for sitting down. Thank you very much. I shall see you again very soon. I'll sh I I'll be seeing you a lot. I mean, I'll be looking at a video a couple cool. of times. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. Thanks, man. Thanks, guys. See, see you around. Bye-bye.